they're showing the carnage of Jim Jones People's Temple in Guyana, South America. Independent investigators now believe this to have been an experimental death, torture, and brainwashing camp clandestinely run by the CIA. The cover up, to cover up their atrocities, the CIA ordered an assassin team to go in and kill Jones and his followers. The Ghana coroner reported that most died of gunshot wounds, not cyanide poisoning. Hmm. Everything must change. In my video, in my video, Goliath USA, available in VHS or DVD, you will see just how close we are to that scary night when the jackbooted thugs of America's ruthless new special forces, Gestapo, will begin breaking down doors and hauling Christians and patriots off to the camps. These Gulag camps are already built. They are being furnished with the most heinous of torture devices. Some will be equipped with guillotines and crematoria, thumb screws, cattle prods, branding irons, skull crushers, tongue clamps, and microchip implantation devices will be used in dark dungeons of torture and death. Bush, ostrich, to neck, and the boys are preparing the way, conditioning the mass public, rousing fear and alarm, declaring that cell after cell of domestic and foreign terrorists are out there plotting more crimes of infamy. If necessary, Washington DC tells us the Constitution must be shelved. The need for the people's security and safety make the Bill of Rights antiquated and obsolete. Torture also must be made acceptable, say Jewish lawyers like New York's Alan Dershowitz and Associates. It's another picture. It says investigators found this rail car equipped with shackles parked in an isolated area on the train tracks. It appears to be designed to transport prisoners. During the French Revolution, as the Masonic Illuminist plotters ominously mounted up frightened legions of bewildered men, women, and children targeted for rape torture, mass drownings, and the guillotine, the revolutionary leaders of the government in Paris led by Robespierre, Voltaire, and other luminous cried out, everything now is different. Everything has changed. Liberty requires action. Capi Diem seize the day. Listen closely, my friends, for that day, fatal cry is being loudly cried out even today in the USA, and the same devils are behind it all. That's the conclusion of the whole matter, that's it. I just wanted to read that, because a lot of times I think uh, people get caught up in their own world and don't realize that this man is serious about his world. And it's his world, whether you want to accept it or not. Esau has the world. It's his world. I just wanted to uh, read that to you to get you uh, a little bit of understanding behind the scenes. A lot of people, they caught in their own little bubble. Their own little bubble, you know, and they don't really think that those things are possible. But it has happened over and over again. And knowing that we got next, the children of Israel, and the scripture says what they're going to do, you can fool yourself if you want to. 
better wake up. Keep your eyes, as I say, that's why I keep telling you it's very important to keep studying. To keep studying. To stay in this word. Continue to be in this word because this is, this is our only hope is through the most high power of Aram, Isaac, and Jacob. Do y'all realize that? I hope so. I really hope so because there'll come a time when Esau gonna start fulfilling what it is that he vowed. Let's look at this vow. Go to uh, Genesis the 27th chapter. Start at verse 1. Genesis 27, one down. some deer meat for him that he loved. Go ahead. Right, so he said, go get this deer meat and make it for me the way I like it so I can bless you before I die. Go ahead. Father Jacob in order. She said, hey, look, I heard what Isaac, my, father, my husband, told your brother Esau. So now you listen to me and obey me. Go ahead. So you see what's happening here. Eve <laughs> heard. Eve heard what time it is as far as the blessing supposed to come to Esau. So she'd have flipped it over. Say, now nah, it's gonna come to Jacob, but she fulfilling prophecy. That's why I say you don't know what how the most are gonna do things, but she's fulfilling what was promised. You know? So go ahead. So right there, right there letting you know that Esau came out hairy all over like a hairy garment, it says. And Jacob letting you know that he's a smooth man. He don't have all that hair on his, on his body like Esau did. That's a difference in two different nations, two different, two different people, but still fraternal twin brothers. 
Go ahead. Right. So you say, Isaac going to fill him and realize that, hey, wait a minute. This is Jacob. Because Esau real hairy. All kind of characteristics going to give up him. Read. Say, oh, you lying to me, son. Go ahead. There go Eve. He said, hey, let the curse be on me. Just do what I say, boy. Don't have to get that kid or the goat. Go ahead. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. Right, so she cooked that meat up so just the way Isaac loved it. Go ahead. So she took Esau's some of best some of the best of Esau's garments and put on Jacob. His memory's gotta be, he gotta pretend like he's Esau. Go ahead. Stop, stop, listen. You gotta hear this. She took the skin of the goats. Now that's goat. That's the goat hair and everything on his hands, on his hands and on his neck. That's hairy. We got a picture of him. You know, people think it's a fur coat. No, that's how they came out. Right. You know, but she put the skin of the goat on his hands and on the on his neck. Go ahead. Right, so she gave Jacob, our forefather, the savory meat. She made it just like Isaac loves it. She know, you know she know. Hooked it up, gave it to him, to go in to see his father. But let's go back to Genesis, the 25th chapter, and let's look at uh, what it says pertaining to what would happen. And just to show you, because, you know, because people in the church say, before we can get there, Jacob stole the birthright. So let's let's look at what's you say something about? No, I'm saying cause. No, I heard oh. oh yeah, they say that they say that in church. Get uh Genesis twenty five and nineteen. Let's look at this so you can see what happened. Right. So Isaac, slow down, huh? So Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Batanaram, the sister to Laban, that's her brother. Laban is her brother, the Syrian. Go ahead. Right. So Isaac treated the most high for Rebecca, his wife. Because she was not pregnant. She couldn't get pregnant. And the most high was entreated of him, Rebecca, his wife, conceived and she got pregnant. Go ahead. So why are these children fighting inside my womb? She could understand it. Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Most High. So she went to a seer or a prophet to inquire of the Most High. Go ahead. And the Most High said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. So he told her, Two nations are in thy womb. 
Read. So it says two different matter of people going to be separated from thy bowels. I mean, they're going to be different. They're not going to be the same. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Right. So it says the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder, the firstborn, shall serve the younger. Going to be a servant to the younger. The first baby come out gonna be a slave to the young, the next baby that come out. And we are stronger physically, mentally, spiritually, any way you look at it, than they are. For all that we've been through and still strong as we are, oh yes. You see that. They say the elder shall serve the younger, read.